This is the second in my series of videos about programming adventure games. Now, as with all programs of any complexity, the first thing you need to do when you start on an adventure game is to plan it out. At the outset, you don't need to worry about the actual gameplay, that's the story, the landscape, the puzzles. The first thing you need to do is to figure out the structure. For the sake of simplicity, I'm going to assume that you'll be writing this in an object-oriented language, so you'll need to work out the class hierarchy. To do that, you have to decide what sorts of objects will be in the game. Well, you'll probably have treasures of some sort, and you'll certainly have locations or rooms. And you may have characters, let's call them actors, and the primary actor will be the person playing the game. Now, each of these classes will have a name and a description. So I'll create a base class called Thing, with a name and a description. Now, don't worry what name and description are. To some extent, that may depend on which programming language you decide to use. But they're probably going to be either variables or properties by which I mean a combination of a private variable and a public accessor method for getting or setting the value of a variable. As you go on to refine and develop the game, you'll no doubt add on more classes, maybe a special thing holder class to maintain lists of things that can be contained, say, as the contents of a room or as the treasures in a treasure chest. And you may then go on and define specific types of treasure, such as weapons, jewels and so on. But this simple class hierarchy is enough for me to get started. Here are a few simple adventure game class hierarchies that I've implemented in various different programming languages. Here is Ruby, and ActionScript, Objective C, and C Sharp. I'm not going to explain the syntax in depth of all these languages, so I'm assuming that you know the basics of how to create class hierarchies in the language of your choice. The thing I want to get across here is the planning of those classes, so that when you start coding, you have an idea of the classes you need. You have a simple thing class, for example, uh, followed by list management classes, perhaps such as thing holder and then descendant classes, such as room or actor, which are types of thing or holder and are therefore capable of maintaining lists of things. Once you've defined the class hierarchy, the next thing you need to do is decide on how you will create the map. The map is the landscape of the game. It's the structure that connects one room to another so that when the player moves north from the treasure room, say, he or she arrives in whatever room is at the north, say the troll room. When moving east from the troll room, the player arrives in maybe the crystal dome, or whatever, and so on. And there are many ways in which you can create a map. You could use anything from a simple array of room objects to a complex network of linked rooms. I'll explain the pros and cons of some different types of map in my next video. For more hints, tips, program code and special offers, sign up to our newsletter at www.bitwisemag.com mail.